Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey, thanks for joining us on uh, the video of what was originally a supercar the day it came out. Think about this for a minute. Most cars uh, are exotic in this level anyway, but this car here, not only was it fast as a regular Corvette, but for almost an additional complete 100% more in the MSRP, right? This car was around $30,000 when it was new. It was almost an additional $30,000 to move this to the ZR1 package, okay? I was involved in all of this when these came out, and I was selling cars at the same time then. Uh, which dates me currently at this point. But anyway, that's a whole other story. But I remember when these came out. At the time, dealers were getting 25,000 over sticker. These things were selling for over $100,000. Uh, so it was insane. This car, first off, that day was ridiculously fast. Now, even with the low mileage uh, that it is right now, it's still a supercar, but it's even faster today. And we'll run down the list of why. And that's why I think it's probably one of the best bargains, period, that we've ever had. So. 90 Corvette ZR1, driven around 2,000 miles a year with incredible history. We're talking about books, records, uh, multiple sets of keys, owner's manual. It's like that kind of collector car that if you wanted one really, really cool car that could keep up and be faster than many of today's modern cars, many of today's, okay, if not most modern cars, this car is it right here. We're talking about these cars here being able to approach almost 200 miles an hour uh, right out of the box. Uh, I would never drive like that. Of course, you guys have seen me many times. Right hand lane, flashers on, uh, pretty much all up against the wheel. But that's not really me, but you know what I mean. All right, so take a walk around for a minute. So the original torch red car, you say, well, don't, of course it's a tor torch red car. No, that's not true. This car started life as a torch red car. There are many cars that have been painted different colors along the way. And if you're gonna own a collector car, authenticity is important. So torch red and great factory paint still, all right? Really, really nice. You can read all the letters in there really well, okay? The original glass, it's a ZR1 glass, all right? With the cutout here, uh, like it's supposed to have. That's an expensive piece of glass. Really? That's, I had no idea. Well, you're right. That's why. All right, so these cars here not only had uh, an incredible amount of power, but they had a little bit of issue with brakes. And it wasn't about brakes driving on the street, it was brakes on the track. So if you wanted to use power, now this one here has upgraded power, okay, and upgraded sound an upgraded suspension, an upgraded brake, and upgraded tires. But come in here and check this out. So instead of having standard uh, Corvette brakes, these bear giant calipers in here with these uh, three-piece rotors, say, hello, how you doing, all right? Goodyear F1s, right? This is a track car. If you wanted to take this to a vintage race, did you just hear what I just said? This car could qualify for a vintage event. There's no Porsche out there from 1990 that's gonna have any chance against this 400 plus horsepower machine when they were making uh, somewhere around 250 horsepower in 1990, a uh, 911 would have made 250 horsepower. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, so as we roll around the car, it still has great style, man. This top comes off. This is really one of the only daily driver exotics ever built. The top comes off. It has killer AC. It has incredible uh, sport seats with all these lumbar controls. Nice tires and wheels so that it rides really well. You can firm up the suspension. This has a magnetic select ride, okay? So you have three different suspension settings. You can put it on soft. You can put it on soft. Arm around whoever it is in the car with you, talking all lovely, maybe listen to some Sinatra. Then maybe it's another day and you feel a little feisty. You want to set the setting to the middle, right? Maybe a little bit of uh, a Guns N' Roses. And then you're feeling hard and you're feeling fast and maybe it's Metallica coming out of the Bose Gold sound system. And this is the car that you're rolling down the road with. All right, so quick identifier for ZR1s, because a lot of people don't know that, is this wheel has this inset. So that's how you know right away it's a ZR1, because from here back, this car is two inches wider on each side. All right, quick identifier, because most of the wheels on Corvettes will have this amount of area, okay? And you can tell right away that this ZR1 is this. Another quick identifier, come back here for a second will be this tag bracket. This is exactly how much <laughs> the car is wider than a standard Corvette, all right? That's how you know. These are wider back here because they needed to put wheel and, more wheel and tire in there. They didn't want it hanging out, and that's how you uh, get a cool, very different car. So as you walk around, this has an upgraded Corsa exhaust that looks stock, but it sounds spectacular. When we fire it up, you'll go, you know what? That sounds spectacular. <laughs> Perfect, I'm glad we could agree already on that. All right, uh, tune port injection. This right here, uh, I want to pop the hood because you need to see that the engine under this hood is as exotic today as it's 2016 we're doing the video. It's as exotic today as it was back then. 
and you will not be ashamed to go to a car show, open this hood, it will gather a crowd for sure. All right, so if you've never owned a Corvette, a lot of people don't even know how to open uh, a Corvette, so they'll run up to the front, they'll be looking for the handle, but you'll know better because uh, you saw the video. All right. Okay, so for me, when I'm looking at a collector car like this, it looks really stock, but it's really, really well kept. Like for instance, like see the original decals that are all in place still? I'm talking collector car here. Those are cars that go up in value over the time, right? This is how these kinds of things happen. These are unplugged because this car was shown a lot, and when these are plugged in, it drains the battery and uh, you could potentially have a dead battery. So they're just unplugged, they do work. Um, but look at everything around and how clean it all is. Oil filter is remote here. The engine is completely different. Built by Mercury Marine, you may already know that, but they were uh, an exotic engine builder for, for Marine and things like that. So General Motors summoned them to build this bad, bad machine. This has some upgraded parts inside the engine. Inside the engine, all right? So it's not only is it, uh, was it fast from the factory, this one here has all, and on top of it, we're able to back that up. So we have uh, some dyno sheets with around 385 horsepower, I believe, at the rear wheels, which translates to the way they would have rated it back in the day to over 440 horsepower uh, right here at the engine. So uh, 450 horsepower, uh, exotic car is still a pretty fast car today, and uh, especially cars in this range because they don't weigh much. Most people don't know that a Corvette weighs in the low 3,000 pound range, actually a little less than a, a Porsche 911, which is a lot shorter. So these bigger cars like Camaros and Mustangs, whatever, can be six and 700 pounds more. So that's why these were so fast. Don't forget, you got four wheel independent suspension, you got positive traction, you got giant wheels and tires. Look at the control arms inside here. You have the adjustable suspension that we talked about. And if Colin can get some shots in here, just about some of the, the wiring. Here's how you adjust the headlight angle right here on both of those adjusters. So if your headlights were off a little bit, you can do that right in here. Just nice and easy to take care of. And these parts are readily available is why I love this so much. All right, so I wanted to show you why I love this car so much because yes, it's an exotic and yes, it's a close to 200 mile an hour uh, car, but you can also, check this out, man. First off, I want to show you the, the feasibility of this, but I want to show you uh, the quality of it as well. You can throw in luggage in here, three or four soft bags, right? And go away for the weekend in this car. Very few 200 mile an hour cars will swallow up this kind of luggage. But what I wanted to show you was the condition of the original carpets. The Delco Bowles Gold sound system is still in place here, working like it's supposed to, all right? It has this tonneau cover here you can pull out and cover up. Uh, anything in the luggage in there. And standard in these cars were the sport seats and they come with a much better looking back of the seat and the seat, wait till you get inside the car and you'd be like, wow, that's a good looking seat. All right, so come on in here for a second. Uh, I wanted it actually so you could hear this annoying sound. Uh, this annoying sound is the sound of everything still working in the car like it's supposed to, like the key and buzzer. I'm sliding the seat back and I'm showing you something that's kind of cool is that like I'm 6'1", I almost, I can't even push the clutch in because I'm too far away. So it lets big guys, big guys in these cars uh, enjoy the, the, the room that they would have. All right, so full gauge package. Now these cars here are redlined at 7,000 RPMs, which is a lot higher than the standard Corvettes were uh, in 1990, right? And the speedometer does go to 200 miles an hour. <laughs> I get chills thinking about that. All right, sport seats. This was an option on some of the uh, regular Corvettes, standard in the ZR1. Uh, you needed this kind of seat. It had that kind of performance. You needed to be held in place, but also is one of the most comfortable seats you'll ever feel. It's got all these lumbar supports here, all right, and adjustments throughout the seat. Squeezes this in, puts pillows here, takes air out, however you want. Beautiful floor mats. Look at the condition of the dash. This is not a car that sat outside. Uh, this has been a garaged car its entire life, and you can clearly see on how beautiful everything is. Still, like, the cup holders are, are great. Uh, this is a nice sign right here. Doesn't look like that he was a smoker. Uh, here's a suspension adjustment, so you have touring, sport, and performance, which we might call Metallica or uh, some other uh, hard name like that. But anyway, so uh, back to the comfort. Power mirrors, power windows, power locks, cruise control, uh, tilt steering. Uh, climate control, and then you have this, my favorite part, the engine power. This is normal, and we call this the valet key, so you can put that on normal power, take the key with you, right? And the valet is only gonna have a couple hundred horsepower, all right? Versus the mother load, boom. Full engine power, it's right there. And you're gonna get it all. Anyway, 
uh, once we start it, you're going to love the sound. One small thing I wanted to show you was, in here, this is kind of cool, this is the build sheet for the car, right? Uh, still inside there, right? The tool for uh, taking the roof off, because the roof comes off and it makes for a totally great driving experience. It's the best of both worlds, where you get almost like the safety of a coupe with this roll bar here, but the convertible uh, version. Places for your cassettes, maybe you want to go back in time, get some cassettes, because look at this. Cassette player. Cassettes are coming back, man, they're coming back. Hey, real quick, I just want to show you uh, here, cool stuff, like original owner's manual, circa 1990. Uh, service records in here, okay, all kinds of great stuff. Part of the registry that it was. Um, NCRS judged as well. Then inside here, uh, some more service records. Here we have the, uh, the CD for the tune of the car, uh, getting all the power down and making it as drivable as possible. This is the way you want to buy a car. I like this, not like one set of keys, don't know where it came from, don't know the other person, whatever, and it was, uh, but it was nice looking, that's why I saw it. You want to get something like this, spend a second, get it from somebody who loved this car, and that's how we got it, and that's how we found you, and now it's your turn. All right, so we close up this video, you know, you need to use the word supercar when you own this thing. When it's sitting in your garage and somebody goes out and goes, wow, that's a nice looking Corvette, but they're not going to know why it's a nice looking Corvette. And then you can say, well, it's a little wider than most. I almost couldn't get it in my garage. Well, it's wider than most Corvettes. Why is that? Well, it's because it's a little special. Oh, it's special? Tell me a little more about it. Well, it's special because it's a ZR1. Oh, I've heard of a ZR1. Can I look under the hood for a second? I thought you'd never ask. Anyway, find a way to get this incredibly cool, well-built, and not only well-built, super fast and maybe significantly faster than a stock ZR1, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about it. Annoying buzzer to awesome sound per Colin.